Hello, my friends, it's Courtney here from Flinit. And today we're gonna to talk about working German short rows when you're knitting in the round. And I know just the mere mention of short rows can be intimidating to some knitters who have never tried them before, but I'm here to walk you through the process step-by-step step and take that scary factor away so you can hopefully expand your knitting skills and open up some new possibilities for your projects. So what are German short rows? Um, as the name implies, they are rows of knitting. So rows are created when you're knitting flat, going back and forth, turning your work from the right side to the wrong side at the end of each row. And they are shorter than the rest of the rows you're working on. And what they do is create a wedge shape that gets built into the rest of your knit fabric once you've completed them. And they're great for adding shaping around things like the neckline, shoulders or back of a sweater. So even though we're knitting in the round, we're gonna work those short rows flat and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. All right, so before we get started, I have this little diagram here to help you visualize how the short rows are gonna get worked. And you can kind of see how that wedge shape is created. So imagine that we're working on a top-down sweater, okay? And this inner ring is our ribbed neckline, and then our piece is growing outward as we knit. So for this example, when we add short rows, we're gonna start at our beginning of round marker, which will mark our center point, and we're gonna knit a certain number of stitches as called for in our pattern, but they won't extend the entire round. They'll be shorter, okay? And I'll promise I'll walk you through this step-by-step step in a bit, but right now I'm just gonna lay out the process for you, okay? So for our example, we are gonna start our first short row with 10 stitches, okay? And you can see that there are different points and they get longer and longer. They're still short rows, but they're longer and longer. And just for our purposes, each one will get longer by four stitches, okay? So we're gonna start by knitting 10 stitches. We're gonna turn our work, do a little maneuver that I will explain in a few minutes, okay? And walk you through. And then we are going to purl because we're gonna have turned our work, we're gonna be on the wrong side. We're gonna purl back and we're gonna go 10 stitches past that beginning of round marker. We're gonna turn our work again, do that maneuver I'll explain. And now we're back on our right side and we're going to be knitting on our right side. And again, we're gonna go now this time past those 10 stitches by four. So we'll go out 14 stitches, turn our work, and come back and we're gonna go back out again, 14 stitches, turn, come back. This time we'll go out to 18, come back, go out 18 past that beginning of round marker and keep going until we finished um, the number of short rows that's called for in our pattern. And that will depend on your pattern, of course. And so you'll just follow those instructions. But just for this example, that's what we're gonna be working with. Okay, so as I just mentioned, each short row um, for our example is gonna get a little bit longer and longer as you go. And the length of each row will be determined by your pattern. But I also wanna mention that in this example, going from the shortest short row to the longest, your pattern might start with the longer short row first and then come back and go shorter um, and shorter, okay? So you're just gonna follow the instructions in your pattern, but for our example, we're starting short and getting longer, okay? All right, so we're ready to get started. And I'm gonna add those short rows in a lighter color yarn just so it's easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. Um, and we're gonna start by um, knitting the first 10 stitches. Just for our example here, um, again, you would um, knit whatever number of stitches is called for in your pattern. But for this example, we are going to do 10, all right? Let's see what I got here, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. All right, and once we've knit those 10 stitches, we are going to turn our work, all right? Okay, so I'm gonna turn my work over, and I've got two strands of yarn here, but you're just gonna be working with one. I've got that those two colors going on just for the demonstration, but you won't have to be fiddling with both strands. Um, now we're going to go back the other way. We're gonna be purling because we are working now on the inside of our work, okay? Um, but before we do that, we're gonna do that little maneuver I talked about earlier, which has a more formal term called making a double stitch, but I didn't wanna bog you down with too much information at the front end, okay? So to make that double stitch, 
we are going to slip the first stitch on our left needle purl wise onto our right needle so you just slip that and then to make that double stitch what we're going to do is we're going to pull up on our yarn and what you can see that did is it kind of made um well it made two legs out of that um the orange colored stitch okay so i'm pulling up rather tightly to create that double stitch and then because we're going to be purling i need to wrap my yarn and bring it back into the front position okay into the front so i've got that double stitch there and once you've done that all we're going to do is we're going to purl back we're going to start purling okay so i am going to purl back um, i'm going to keep continue to purl and once i hit my stitch marker that's my beginning of round marker I'm going to purl 10 stitches past that marker and I'll meet you back there. All right, so I've purled to 10 stitches past my um, marker and I'm ready to make that double stitch again, all right? So I'm gonna turn my work and now I'm on the right side again, but I need to bring my yarn to the front, my working yarn to the front and then we're going to slip that first stitch on our left needle onto our right needle again. And we're going to pull up on that stitch to create those two legs again. And you gotta pull up pretty hard and you'll see that there's the two legs that are forming, okay? But since I'm knitting this time, I don't need to bring my yarn back in the front. I can leave it where it is. You just wanna give that a good tug to create those two legs of that double stitch and then I'm going to simply continue knitting okay and this is the part where we're going to go four stitches past that last row we created okay and I'm going to show you what to do when I get a little closer to that point all right, so I'm getting closer to that double stitch that we created in our first short row here. And you can see it, it just kind of looks a little wonky. It's got two legs on that one stitch. You'll notice it um, as you come along in your knitting. So I'm two stitches before that. So I'm just gonna keep finishing my knitting here. And now I've come to that wonky double stitch. So we don't want to end up knitting both legs of that because we'll create an extra stitch. So once you reach that double stitch, all you want to do is knit both legs together. And that resolves those um, two legs, having those two legs from that double stitch before. And we're going to knit an additional four stitches past that. So one, two, three, four. Okay, all right, so I knit my four stitches past the double stitch from the last um, row, and I'm ready to turn my work again. So I simply turn it, and now I am going to slip that first stitch on my left needle again, and since we're purling, we're on the wrong side, my yarn's already in front. All I need to do is give that a good tug to create those two legs, that double stitch, and I'm gonna tug it again. I'm gonna pull that yarn back in front to get it in the purl position, and I'm gonna purl back. And again, this time I'm going to keep purling back until I've gone four stitches past the double stitch that was created in the last row. But once we get a little closer, I'll show you how to resolve the two legs of that double stitch, okay? All right, so I've purled back past my beginning of round marker and I'm wanting to go four stitches past that double stitch. And there's that double stitch again. You can see it just looks a little wonky. There's two legs coming out of that one stitch, all right? So I'm going to, I'm just a couple stitches before that. I'm going to purl as I've been doing. And once I reach that wonky double stitch, I'm going to, because I'm on the wrong side right now and I've been purling, um, we are going to just purl those two legs together to resolve that and get it back to one working stitch, okay? So I just purl that together and then I want to continue on four stitches past that. So I knit one, two, three, four.
And once we've purled those stitches, we are going to turn our work again, back to the right side, and bring our yarn to the front, slip that first stitch, give it a good tug to create that double stitch, and then continue on with our knitting, okay? And we're gonna continue this process over and over again until we've um, completed all of the short rows that are in our pattern. And we're gonna resolve those double stitches by knitting the two legs together if we're on the right side or purling the two legs together if we come to it on the wrong side until we've completed all of our short rows. All right, so once we've completed those short rows that we created by knitting flat um, and turning our work each time, we can continue knitting in the round. Um, and what we've created is this nice wedge shape and you shouldn't notice um, any holes or gaps um, because when, when you pull up tightly, when we make those double stitches, um, that should prevent that from happening. You just get this nice wedge shape no additional stitches created because any of those double stitches we made, we resolved um, when we went back and either knit the two legs together or purled them together when we came to them the next time. And what we've created is just this wedge shape that gives us additional fabric to create um, some shaping for our project. So I hope this tutorial helped you out. I hope it um, took away some of the scary factor from um, short rows and I can't wait to share more with you next time. Thanks so much for being here. Follow me on Instagram at Flynnit to see what I'm working on next.